So I'm going to talk this afternoon about restoring the asymmetric advantage. Asymmetric advantage has always been, for people that understand asymmetrics versus symmetrics, attackers have had, in my opinion, the, uh, an asymmetrical advantage over the last X number of years where their vectors of attack are a lot more than our vectors of uh, defence. So they can come at us in any which way they choose and we have to try and defend against that. My opinion, good luck. As I said, historically, defenders of cybercrime, sorry, defenders of cybercrime had the advantage over the bad guys. In 2009, we started to notice that the bad guys got it better. I would have said probably a little bit earlier than that. You know, the, advantage, uh, the advent of Windows 95, a Swiss cheese made operating system was awesome. That came out. Network-based attacks proliferated everywhere. Okay, I'd like to draw a little bit of a circle on this. You know, years and years ago, many years ago, when I first jumped into this game, the vectors of attack were a social engineering style of attack. So you know, people relied on people to attack, you know, gain trust, gain confidence, establish certainty. Bang, gotcha. Right? Then operating systems, more, you know, more connectivity across um, with PCs became more connected to each other. You had the advent of the, the real internet, the World Wide Web hit. Machines just got owned left, right and centre. All right, for those that know, 95, 98, don't talk about Windows ME. And other operating systems for that, I'm only picking on, those, picking on the Windows um, because 99% of the market is a Windows based. You know. Okay, 2011, we realised they got a clear advantage. Right? The attackers have a clear advantage over the defenders. As I said at the beginning, they can come at us any which way they choose. Right? We have to A, identify the attacks, B, defend the attacks, remediate. It's difficult. Attack times. This is an interesting one. All right, 2011, it took 30 days to brute force an attack. Right, capture a password hash, a good strong password, 30 plus days. Right, I know a lot of top level encryption algorithms are built, the highest grade, are built on the premise that it takes more than 30 days to break. So therefore you change the key every 30 days, bad guys can't get you. If they get, they break it after that, the information's null and void, it's gone. A couple of years later, seven days. Today, a day. Right, a few slides later on, which I'll show, that backs that one up. This slide's lovely. The uh, heat map showing breaches across the world. We've all seen some of these big ones. Right, the ones of this year, the Target, the Adobe breach, uh, the eBay breach, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the fun ones. Right, can anyone guess what that large red circle that's cut off in the middle at the bottom is? Sony. That's one of the more famous ones, right? Internet of Things. Okay, this is something that we're watching very carefully. I'm personally watching very carefully. Okay, today, less than 0.2, maybe a bit more than that these days, of items that want to be on the net are currently there. IPv4, right? We all know IPv4 dresses ran out a long time ago now. Okay, it's now just a scramble to get addresses. IPv6 means every single thing connected to the internet is addressable. Mobile phones, uh, fridges, smart fridges, smart TVs, you know, every PC. Okay. So there is the face of your next attacker. What does that mean? Cows. Okay, there are a lot of milking farming, uh, dairy farmers that are now putting tags on their cows to measure milk produce, okay, the mood of the cow. Is the cow happy? You know, is it making more milk? Has it been fed? These things are actually addressable using IPv6. So I can take control of these things and create a DDoS attack. Why not? Right? They're not protected. They're out there for us to have. Right? Trees. Trees is another one. We've, we've seen trees that have got tags in them that sit there and measure the rate of growth, the health of the tree, etc. For um, Logging forests. 
It's a scary thing. All these things, you have certain functionality has been designed into these things. People don't look at the security aspects of it, whereas the functionality is awesome. It's going to do this for us. It's going to make the world a better place. We're going to get this. What about an attacker? How does an attacker look at it? Right? Does an attacker look at that and go, that is now just a tool for me to do evil? Global crime numbers. This one's a scary one when I first saw this. Right? Global crime, two trillion annu annual proceeds. I mean, who would want a company like that? I would. Right? 3.6% of the world's GDP. Okay? $338 billion a year, US. The media only reports a fraction of that. Why? Right? These guys that are doing this are really, really good. And I'm not talking about state-based attacks and the wonderful stuff like that. I'm talking about the guys that do this to make money. They are good. What are they after? Brands. So an attack might become down to take out a, uh, the, the branding of a company. The Sony's a good one, right? Target's a good one. We all heard about the, uh, the wonderful fun and games that happened with Julian Assange and Visa. Okay, so Visa cut off Assange. So um, anonymous, wonderful people decided to attack Visa and take them out as retribution. Went after the brand, right? Immediately tries to cost them money. So they took down their website for six minutes. Awesome, good attack, fellas. Should have found the DNS server and taken them out for six days. Right. Assets, okay, so if we can take control of your assets, and steal your IP, go after a software company. You know, I've read, read uh, case studies on um, advanced attacks I won't try and use the word APT, advanced attacks where an attacker has spent two years, quite literally two years, going after a software company. Right, first six months, he worked and worked and worked and got the penetration. Okay, discovered, he got to the CEO's laptop, Disc you know, took control of it. The CEO, uh, this was back in the days, anyone familiar with the zone alarm firewall? Right, zone alarm firewall, he managed to disable it. Okay, CEO noticed it one day. Oh, sorry, I do, do need to backtrack. The attacker was based in Australia. So working to a US base meant the time zone difference worked for him really well. Why? He was working when they were not. So the CEO realised that his, uh, his firewall was turned off. So he uh, switched it back on, logged a file. Right, the attacker realised that it happened. He backed out, left the door open, Backed out, did not reconnect to that network for six months. Why? Patience. Right? Eventually, got the server, got the software code, right? put it out, what did he do with it? Didn't sell it, didn't do anything with it. Put it on the internet. So look at this, got this, huh? It's mine now. That was it. Right? That was many years ago, before the monetary value was it. So what do they do now? Exactly the same thing but they make money after what they get, okay? The other side of that second point is, if I can get control of your assets, I can use them to DDoS cows. Compute, storage fabric, same thing. If I can get control of your, um, your network and use your compute fabric across it, I can then use it to do Bitcoining, Bitcoin mining, right? That's an awesome thing. Um, I can use it to, to you know, create, uh, use your systems to attack people. Okay, I personally have done um, a few a few testings where I've taken control of people's uh, networks and have demonstrated how I can use their network, unauthenticated, and use it to do nefarious things. Right, most people don't think about it. Is you know, I've got this network, I've got a wireless system sitting here, uh, it's got an internet connectivity, I'm using it for functionality uh, to provide my guest people authenticated wireless service. I bypass the authentication mechanism on the wireless, take control of the internet. What can I do with that? Great, I've got an internet. I can download illegal pornography. I can download how to make a bomb. I can download terrorist threats information. What's that going to do? 
straight away the AFP is going to come banging on that customer's door, going, what are you doing? Right? So what have I done there? I've hurt the brand. Right? It hits the press that company X was doing this. It's not true, but to the world wide web, to the world wide, that's it, that's what they did. Okay, from that, the rest of that hack was even worse. I got into their network. I got their payroll server. The company's still paying me. No, I'm just kidding. Same for financial services company. Brand value. This is the value of brand, okay? It's brand value worth $6 billion. Right? Enterprise value, $78 billion. Okay, it's, it's fabric costs. It's compute fabric, $200 million. It's a fraction of what it's worth. Cost of brand replacement is 10 to 1. So you get hit, you get owned, and it gets out in the world, right? your share price is going to fall. There are a few examples where that hasn't happened, and I'll go through those, but your share price is going to drop. Right? Your shareholders are going to be really cranky. The board's going to be in a lot of trouble. What does it take to get that back? Last major breach, 44% reduction in brand value. That was that big red circle. Right, poor Sony is still trying to recover. And they got hit again this week. Not their fault, it was a DDoS attack. Took out the PlayStation 3 network. At the end of the day, big deal. Everyone's used to it. So, okay. Results, $26 billion cost. Best way, as security professionals working for these companies, or even the government department, all right, get the directors of the company, the board, to understand how much money in real dollars it's going to cost them, and you'll get your projects funded. I promise you that. Right. GFC is built on trust. Bit of a loaded statement, if you ask me. Anything that undermines that trust will put the system at risk. We all know that the share markets are jittery. Someone says it's not Thursday, it's Wednesday. Right. On Friday, the market crashes. Okay, it happens. Good example of how to actually protect your brand and then subsequently protect your value, right? Wells Fargo suffered a major DDoS attack. Okay, it hit them and it hit them hard. So what did they do? They didn't shut up about it. Okay, Recognised they got smashed. Okay, systems went down. Systems coughed up. Does everybody understand what happens or can happen in a DDoS attack? Hands up, who can actually, who understands what happens? So two things, right? First time your network's gone, right? Your systems are unavailable. People can't connect to you, get the information, trade, whatever. Second one is, some of those systems, if they're not configured correctly, will literally cough up their entire value on the server. Password files, credentials, shadow files. Yeah, very interesting stuff that we're going to go after. So if I can smash a system and get it to cough back a shell, get it to cough back file, contents of files, that's what I'm going to do. Right? And it comes into the next few slides as to why I do that. Okay? So what Wells Fargo did is they took on, they went on the front foot and said, you know what, we've been hit. We got hit, we've managed to handle the DDoS attack. Our systems have not coughed up account details, you know, sensitive information. Right? On the front foot, told all their customers, Right, this is what you should, we, you know, we've, we've hit, copped it, this is what we want you to do. Right? Trust was maintained. Customers went, that's great. Didn't lose a single customer. Not one. Right? Brand defence is not just about technology. It's a very important point. Okay? It's not about what sort of systems you put into place. It's not whether you know, your firewalls, your next generation firewalls, how good your IPS is, how good your content filtering is, identity management, anything. It's about how you communicate with your stakeholders right, and how you handle it, your incident response. What's the real shape of the threat? Okay, it's global. It comes from anywhere. Anyone here of the Tor network? The Onion router? It's been around for years. Right, years and years. No, it used to be a very good anonymization service. It used to be where the bad guys could hit, you know, the dark side of the internet. Okay, yes, it now can be read and now can be monitored by a select few. It's an interesting image. I like that image. I'm going to put that as my wallpaper. The, um, 
how do you know what's coming at you? Is basically what, what we're trying to say here. All right? Those packets coming through your internet these days, connection, lots and lots and lots of them. What's evil? What's not? What's benign? Okay, so what looks good but is actually evil? I repeat this one. Okay, repeat this slide. It's very pointed. Anybody done research on these things? Graphics card. Commercially available off the shelf. This one's an NVIDIA Titan. Personally, I use the Radeon 290X. It's more powerful. Okay? The point is, when we put this together, that was the duck's guts of video cards that you could buy. Right? The 290X, the AMD card, came out and beats it. Right? 280 gig, gigabits per second of processing. The one I've got in my machine at home runs 320. Okay? Smashes hashes like you wouldn't believe. Scares me. All right? That's one card. That's three. Okay. So what does this mean? Right. That device or that system for a few thousand bucks will take, an, well, a single card will take an eight character complex password hash and break it in 20 hours, maybe quicker. Right. That system will take that same hash and break it in a lot less time maybe a couple of hours. That system will take a nine character complex password, which the single card will take 10 to 11 weeks, and break it in a week. So I DDoS your systems, or I attack your systems, take control of them, and get credentials, right? So the, you know, the target breach, the Adobe breach, I get those credentials. They all come out in hash form. You know, the LinkedIn one that came out, all the hashes, what came is what gets popped. So I take those hashes and start feeding them through these things. Right, I've got your credentials. It gets worse. I have seen videos of custom built chassis with riser cards off the motherboards with 15 of these things running. So a 15 character complex password hash, which should take literally a thousand years to break, gets broken in 10 minutes. Right? What we're dealing with is a supercomputer. Right? Off the shelf. This is the stuff that these guys have available to them. This is the resources these guys have available to them right now. How do we defend it? Most organisations typically defend the entry and exit points of the enterprise. Right? The firewall, the IDS. Okay? How do we evolve? We need to start looking inside. We need to start looking outside. Okay. Commercial security guys use device-based security that relies on signatures. Right? So if it's got a particular signature, it's evil or it's good. Not true. All right? it, now everything needs to be looked at from a pattern recognition. What is this file actually going to do? Can we tell what it's going to do? If we don't know about it, what do we do with it? If you don't know about it, don't let it in. Okay, next generation technologies include application data, data security. So you know, next gen firewalls, app ID firewalls, you know, sandboxing, wonderful stuff like that. Right, threat based security looks like entire environment and scores a threat. Entire environment. Okay, not just your firewall and your gateways. Look inside. What's happening on the inside? Right, most of the time you're not going to, these, the, mal the good malware, the really good malware, embedded, okay, good example, JPEG onto a Word document will go through most content filters. Okay, so the executable buried inside the JPEG on the Word document will go through a content filter. Tested this personally, it happens. There's only one content filter I'm aware of that gets, that's picked that up and you can't buy it. Okay, threat-based awareness needs to be beyond a single company's view viewpoint, information sharing. How do we handle this? Right, Global Risk Operations Centre, we have all these feeds, all this information, using our own research, using partner research, such as Mandiant. We use we work with CA on this. Right. I'm trying to go quick because I'm getting the wind up, sorry. 
how to defend at cycle times. Today's best practice is it takes 24 hours to respond to an event, respond to an incident, typically. Okay? Some people are better, some people are worse. I've seen three weeks. We've been hacked. What do we do? Three weeks later, we made a decision on how to, how to address it. Way too late. In an emergency, it can take 24 minutes. That might be the shutdown time of the systems. That's it. Okay? These days, not tomorrow anymore, we need to respond to these things in 240 milliseconds. How do we do that? Take the person out of the event. All right? The human is made aware by a smart system. Okay? Software-defined networks. NTT around the world, through building and connecting their extensive range of data centres, built decided to build it a software-defined network to allow better management of the systems in those in those data centres. What they realised using the SDN is they actually had, had a network now which could identify threats before they hit their hit the actual target. So a customer sitting on the network, you know, connected to our GROC. We could identify the threat was originating in Europe, potentially, potentially destined for here, right, and head it off. You know, either divert, shut it down, honeypot it, whatever. Right, advanced compute storage, that's how we do it. We built this, the fabric that underpins now. You know, 260 data centers around the world. Some of them look like that, it's pretty cool. What we're doing, integrated threat management, information. Information from the outside, what's happening around the world, what the bad guys are trying to do, get the information feed on that. All right, what's happening inside your network. All right, so we take feeds from inside clients' networks, where applicable, where possible. Okay, collaborate all this information across the GROC and we get a very good picture of what is actually occurring. It's the only way to do it. Right? I talk, I'll do another talk about SEAM solutions, incident and event management systems. Someone, people have asked me in the past, what's the first step that I'm going to take to secure my networks? Monitoring. The analogy is everyone drives a late model car these days. You know, the computational power of your average car is more than the Apollo spacecraft, literally. Okay, so if you can pop the bonnet of your car, can you tell me what's going out of the bonnet? No. Can you do it in your network? Why not? You need to. Right? That's what this is all about. Okay? Defence in depth. Right? So there's no, more, there's no more borders. Borders are gone. Right? We're talking looking out, looking at the perceived border, so the fluffy border now, okay? and looking in. All right? Risk management. Identify your risks. Identify your real risks. Okay? Put in mitigation strategies. Put in incident response plans. Okay? To protect, to communicate, protect that brand value. Right? A different approach is needed to understand the threat landscape. No longer can we just whack in firewalls and whatever and just hope we don't get hit. So information security must be embedded into the fabric of the business but maintaining the functionality of the business. We cannot, in the old days of security, wearing black shirts saying, no, you can't do this anymore, this has got to stop, you're not allowed to do that. They have to integrate into what the business is doing. Right? Business drivers go ahead, but security must be a paramount, integral component of that function. We're taking a different approach. Right? What are we doing? The cybercrime guys play by their own rules. We don't like the game. Change the rules, right? fundamental. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Just to start here, there might be some... Any questions from anyone? I mean, I certainly feel more petrified now and much more comfortable about my fridge knowing what I eat. Um, but are there any questions? I mean, it's a fa fascinating topic um, of concern. All right, well, just while everyone's thinking, just one question. Uh, I saw you had um, video cards up there, and I've heard about that before, I guess. Is there a point in time now where perhaps mobile phones will be the culprits now of hacking things? That device there has more computational powers than some of the systems I used to work with in defence. 
I'm not joking. All right? I have used that to begin the first phases of a hack. So, yes. All right. So we should all feel comfortable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, these ones are scary, okay? But what's scary is everyone familiar with the Wi-Fi? You know, everyone understands Wi-Fi networks, wonderful. Um, have you heard of a Wi-Fi pineapple? Okay. My advice to you is when you walk out your home, disable the wireless on this thing. You don't need it. Okay, when you're leaving your house, there's two things. Turn it off, it saves the battery. We hate battery, for, you know, battery life on the phones these days. But I've got a pineapple device sitting at home. I bought it for 100 bucks off the internet. I can't build it for 100 bucks. Right? It's a Linux-based Raspberry Pi device. What I can do with that thing is every time, I just well, I set it up in the office once, and I shouldn't read a few people in the office here, they're going to hate me for this. Um, I set it up in the office once just to watch what this thing does. And it has two wireless antennas in it, and it emulates. It detects what people are scanning for. So it, it picked up what my phone was looking for. Was, these things poll, forever polling for the networks that they were connected to through your wireless, including credentials. So they're polling for the SSID, and they're sending the password. Starters. So I go, oh, wonderful. Hi, I'm that. Right? So this phone goes, oh, cool. Connects. So the other side is to the network, the internet. Excellent. So you start connecting to Facebook. So if you've got Facebook app on your phone, it starts automatically connecting to Facebook with credentials. So I've just assumed your identity on Facebook. I'm not kidding. It's that easy. All right. So long version of the answer? Yes. Thanks again anyway. <laughs> Thank you.